Hello everybody and welcome back to Middle Earth. This is Count MRVHS with another episode of our Fourth Age Total War Dwarves campaign. And this is likely to be a short little battle to start the episode off today. Uh, we massively, massively overpower uh, this enemy army of Rune, at least in terms of um, the balance of power bar. We, we do outnumber them, but not by a ton given the size of um, the numbers in Dwarven units. But uh, they've got some very low tier stuff here. This should be a fun little quick battle. We're just baiting them with uh, with our Wayne bows to get things started. Their only ranged troops are these Easterling skirmishers and the bodyguard, Chieftain Scar, so I should probably start targeting him. And then actually probably start getting out of the way. <laughs> oh, I always do this. Overextend my uh, my skirmishers send them in unsupported but we will get the cab in there who knows they may get lucky with a uh, with a charge but it doesn't look like they are that's fine we'll just pull them out there goes the war band now this um this army of rune has already retreated once so they're gonna have to stand and take it Just about to route, I would say. Yep. Save the uh, stamina on these guys by slowing them down a little bit. The slingers are still in range to hit the skirmishers. That's kind of surprising. Okay, now we'll rush them forward. There's the chieftain's guard charging at the Wayne bows. Oh man, they're gonna make contact. Wainbows are always a little slower. There they go. A little slower than I expect. All right, we can keep these guys on skirmish now that there's nothing likely to catch them. Shieldbreakers go after the skirmishers. The other guys go after the warband. And we just kind of mop this up. But sure, let's continue. Although, you know, 82, 85, I think that should be it. So we can... Um, We'll exit the battle at that point. Clear victory. We only lost uh, four men. And I'm thinking some of those are... Oh, Shieldbreakers lost one. I was thinking most of them would be the Cavalry, and some Slingers lost some as well. Not too bad. Now, as much as I would love to at this point, I can't simply continue south from this victory because we do have a large stack right over here L looks to be a good mix of, uh, of troops so we'll need to stay right around Tham for some time I am curious if there's uh, if the faction leader is hiding out in these woods okay that's all set. Um, let's see. Anything else we need to do? For training uh, in Tham. We'll just keep that up. 
do have some movement points in our scout, so we can finally see Thordram. And there's nothing here in terms of uh, in terms of enemy armies. Ah, here's one. Okay, fairly small stack. And I'm I'm just unable to see what's beyond this uh, the northern marches. Right to the west of this, we have the northern highlands. This is the uh, the capital province of North Rune. But there is another province here. Ah, North Rune, which is actually owned by Rune, as I can see over here. So they do have two settlements to my north, in addition to Fennis Rim and this uh, rebel settlement, which uh, is stuffed full of rebels at the moment. Rovanian seems to have taken a step back from uh, from Nereg Zagil. It's all very good. And they're not making a lot of progress against Dorwinian, so that's great news. For here we are assembling these units together. We've got three, four, six, we've got eight units of dwarves. I think that's enough to march through this territory. Um, not certain that it's enough to take this settlement, given that North Rune has a very large stack here. But some of these Barding Militia levies, notice there's only 30 soldiers here. Uh, these are like the, the guys that show up during a rebellion or when you take a settlement through diplomacy. The game will give you a bunch of these basically peasant type of, of, um, of units. So I can't remember how North Rune got this settlement. It may have been through diplomacy. It may have been after a, a rebellion or something. But in any case, that's kind of encouraging that they have these militia levies here. That may mean that this army is uh, less intimidating than it appears. And Gundathorin still has a tiny, tiny population. Okay, and at Old Ford, we do have a Bjorning army here, just outside. Inside, we have a, a decent army. What what I could do is attack this army and have this camp show up as reinforcements if I wanted to uh, take them all out. <clears throat> the thing I'd be worried about here is seeing a, uh, a very forested battle map which I'm likely to because it's obviously the middle of the woods and then that would really hinder my use of this siege ballista I'd probably I'm better equipped to withstand a siege myself rather than to go on the offensive in the woods where the Bjornings are get a bunch of going to get a bunch of bonuses so much as I would like to take them out and eliminate these uh, couple of armies here I think it's better to wait for them to make the move, and I just don't feel like fighting that kind of a battle right now. Good news, though, Adunabar seems to be moving south from Langwijk, which means they're unlikely to be interested in attacking me. Okay. Things are progressing fairly well down here. I like the fact that oh, Harad has a Norian. I may, have, I may have already learned that, but that's still good to know, because they're going to be keeping up the pressure on Rohan, as is a Dunabar, which means it's less likely that Rohan will betray me anytime soon. Okay, and I think that may be all that we want to do at this point. Let's end the turn. Okay, making money. Kim of Beres Doom, get a Mithril Hauberk. Good for you. He was, I believe, the new family member that we picked up uh, with the with the with the thought that we could use him to fight down in Dunland. So I'm going to take him out to do that. Maybe pick up any mercenaries that may have uh, replenished. Here in Hollowbold, we are still not able to recruit anything. Gabildathal, we are. But, I, again, I'm going to wait until I have a higher population. So I think 
I'm not good at math. <clears throat> I think the way this works, population growth. So this is a percentage, right? So every turn, this number of my able-bodied population is going to increase by this number, by this percentage amount. So that means if this number is small, the per turn gain will be small. But if I wait for this number to be bigger, then the per turn gain is going to be bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Is that is that correct? Someone please let me know in the comments. So what I'm thinking is my strategy is if I don't need to train, I should instead wait to build up the population so that it can grow faster so that when I do need the units, I'll have a not only just a larger pool, but a, 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 a I guess less chance that I'll have to wait longer between uh, recruiting things to regrow the population. Because if I recruit down to 400 population every time, it'll take longer to build back up than if I had, say, say trained one unit when my population is uh, 700 or something. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm making sense, so I'll just abandon that, that line of thought for now. But let me know if, if, uh, if that does make sense. Okay, so here we were still holding off on the Fiefdom Dominion. We're down to that 400 limit, so it's not like it's going to get any worse there. Um, and, you know, I, I feel less needy about that, though, because we do have... We do have the ability to train things out of FAM, so let's go right ahead and work on Homeland Dominion. And that didn't even hurt FAM all that much. Okay, up here. Gandor of the Tribe of the Terrible Blow. And here, there's that smaller army we saw. Gwaithring is the name of this settlement. And they've moved their army away from there for some reason. They keep popping in and out of the fog of war. What is this? Where did you even come from? Wow. All right, I think we have to take this army out because if we let them, uh, if we let them stay here, they're going to wander over to Beres Doom and besiege it, and probably this guy's going to, you know, die just in time to not be there. So we do need to take this out. Let's see what the mercenaries are. Okay, we got some longbowmen mercenaries. We will go ahead and grab that. We cannot attack this turn, but we will make that our goal for next turn. We're looking, making 12,000. All right, sure. Hosting halls, that takes half of that. And uh, we'll go with this for a little bit of, a little bit of extra trade. In Gundu Thorin, Old Fort has five seasons left, so the Bjornings seem very reluctant to attack me. Okay, I could do something. Hmm. All right, I'm worried about what might happen here. Okay, they didn't. Uh, no one showed up. So here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Oh, uh, there they are. Okay, so there is a big army just standing out there. Well, now I have this fort. I don't, I don't know that that's going to help me at all. But they left it empty, so now I've got a, a uh, just a, a rabble mercenary unit holding that fort, and maybe they will besiege that rather than the town. And if they besiege that, maybe I can hit them from behind. This is a, a another Bjorning full stack, so. Something we'll have to keep our eyes on. Okay, and here we can move our army down. Let's see, Tharbad is just training like crazy. Oh wow, and we can already train more mercenaries here, so let's, uh, let's, oh, this is our whole horse unit. Uh, let's not bother with it just yet. We can get it in the next, um, next movement phase. So where do I want these guys to end? On Dunlending territory? Yeah. And we can even get another mercenary unit and next turn or thereabouts we will have this army down to join us and then Dunland will have to uh, have to scramble 
figure out where they're going to defend. One season for the way station, and that'll allow us to train our nice Dunlending mercenaries. Okay. Forgot to move my rune army. I think. Okay, so now there's no armies right outside of Erebor. So Dale had been just camping on that bridge out there. And now they're not. They probably will next turn, though. But just in case. So that's two seasons. Can I wait two seasons? Yeah, let's do it. I mean, I got so much population here. It's just, it's such a shame uh, that I that I can't uh, make use of it. So I should. I guess I can always disband them again if uh, Dale blocks me. All right. And all very good. So now I don't think they'll be able to run. Interestingly, North Rune did not attack me here. And so this is going to be just another quick little battle, I guess. I'll make a save here. And we will jump into it. So I, I had talked in the previous episode about potentially taking Yodor, which is the settlement uh, near where I am right now, held by North Rune. But if they're not going to attack me, I, I, I may not want to bother. Okay, we've got a couple of Axemen. Let's put those guys out on the front line as usual. Longbowman can be right here. Alright, something like that would be fine. And I bet they're going to be at the top of this hill. About here, yep. Yeah, so they've got some archers or skirmishers. Uh, no family members, so that's going to be just their tier 2 cavalry. The, uh, was it the raiders? Eastland Raiders, I think. So we'll just get over here where we can get some good shots in. They may have some slingers or other missile troops that can reach us from the high ground, but we'll just have to put up with it. But I don't intend to get into a missile duel with these longbowmen. We do want to save them for... Uh, well, for, for for being an excellent ranged unit that we can't train around here, uh, but also for giving us some numbers, helping with garrison duties, and so on. And that's the thing. If we, if we have to fight North Rune, we'll probably end up taking a lot of losses, and it'll really delay this army getting down to Tham, which is where they're more needed. If I could carve out a nice little safe place for myself down in the Easterling Territory. So this is Bowman. Shoot. Well, let's send the family member straight up ahead. Who are they targeting? Well, I think we'll be just fine. Send the long axes as well as the dwarves of the Iron Hills. <clears throat> oh, I thought I did set the long axes up. Alright, we're just cutting right through them. Oh no. Get up. Yeah, he, he'll be fine. Alright, so I think they just did a war cry, which means for the next 30 seconds or so, they're going to be getting some bonuses to attack. 
did lose one dwarf. So we'll wait a little bit. A few more seconds, let's say. And that should be good. Routers. And the long axes are now flanking the Axemen of Rune. No losses yet from the Dwarves of the Iron Hills who are charging slightly uphill and a little winded from their run. Let's get someone over towards the enemy general. I don't think he'll run away. They don't have any movement points to retreat. love the Dwarves of the Iron Hills. Just a very nice looking unit. Alright, and they are now broken. Alright. Captains don't count. I'm remembering Saltire's advice. Captains don't count. I killed 88% of the enemy. I should be able to just end the battle. And, uh, and the forces will melt away. Now, of course, I could have still stuck around maybe to get some experience for chasing down those routers. I think that counts towards your unit's experience gain, but I'm not too worried about that. All right, and they did melt away. I see. I, I was under the impression the captain needed to die as well. Okay, so, yeah, what we're going to do is walk right through... Uh, North Rune's territory. We're going to head down here. Once we get into Dale's territory, that'll be friendly again. We'll head down through Ravania. That's less friendly. We do have some allies in Dorwinian. They might still attack us, but we can head down through here and at least maybe pick up some more mercenaries. And if Ravania wants to start something, now we've got our relief force headed straight there. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. And uh, we do need to, to keep an eye on the population and hope it grows more so that we will not be left leaderless in uh, the Iron Hills. Or not leaderless, but uh, armyless. And now we can connect these forces, and now the Dunlandings are perhaps recognizing the peril that they are in. I don't think they're going to attack me with anything unless they've got a monstrous stack waiting just over the horizon somewhere. But if they do, I think I'm in a pretty good position. Now I've got another Tharbad army right on the, the crossing there, so I can't continue in that direction. But in Dunkriok, we did finish completing the uh, was the way post or the way station. Way station. And here we go, Hireling Dunlandings. So, a bit of a lesser upkeep than the Hireling Spears. Uh, fewer soldiers, 50 as opposed to 60. But they have got a missile attack, and that's really the uh, the advantage of these guys. So a missile attack of 15, which is very respectable. Uh, defense of 18, attack of 11, charge of 5. So most of those stats are going to be a bit lower than the hireling spears, but we're definitely going to train a few of these units. That'll help us hold the walls and just hold down any territories that we happen to conquer in the area. So, and we've got a huge population here. Oh, okay. Huge by Dwarven Sanders, 827. I thought it was gonna be in the thousands or something, but it is 1% population growth. So that is going to just get better. We've got enough money to spend. Um, I'm gonna need to build this next so that I can get up to the highest hireling level, which is gonna get me, I believe, just hireling guards. So I'm not in a huge rush for that. Uh, roads, we can make stone paved roads, that's very interesting. I'm not really inclined to do that just now, we don't have an, uh, quite enough money yet. But I will go with city development, this is not something that we've really talked about 
in uh, in this Dwarven campaign. So we can build a few different things here. I'm probably going to go with, uh, let's see, it's either Weapon Masters or Guild Masters, Weapon Smiths or Guild Masters. And at this point, I'm thinking possibly Weapon Smiths. But we'll just get this started. And I think we do need to check situation in Rune. Not a lot happening. Okay, there's an army. There's the High Chieftain. Okay, so they're making things a little harder on me now by, by moving down into the south. Well, I'll need to wait for those reinforcements before I make any moves here. One thing you know I do see down here is an opportunity that's not likely to remain for very long, but we've got this army standing just outside Amron Door, and of course if I can attack it, get this to show up as reinforcements, then I could walk into the town. Uh, and I always like doing that, but it's unlikely that's going to remain uh, as an opportunity for much longer. So we may just have to uh, have to leave it. I'm kind of surprised I can reach all the way over to Erebost with no other armies nearby. You know, I'm thinking about thinking about doing something here. Hey, we got some mercenaries. Very nice. So, of course, he could head back up to Tham, which would screw up all of my plans. Uh, or this army could. But if if we can take this, what I'm inclined to do is to... Uh, well, well, we'll see. We'll see. This may be a possibility for us to uh, grab another settlement here and do some interesting creative things with it. We are, again, 22 provinces out of a total of 30 needed for victory. I've got a few on the horizon that I'm looking to, uh, to, to, to grab for myself. This might be one of them. Might be. So maybe in the next episode or two, folks, we'll, we'll see the Dwarven Kingdom grow yet again. I hope you'll join me for that. I hope this has been entertaining for you. And uh, have a good day. Bye-bye, everybody.